Before this discussion, I'd spoken last year at Net Profit um, about the entrepreneurial route that I'd taken. And then, you know, I'd completely opened up the Pandora's box there. And then I was taking a look at the topic that Chris had um, uh, gave, given for today's talk. And it's uh, and then the other thing that I add to that is, okay, I'm speaking to Ogilvy as well. So that's an interesting dynamic. You know, where do I come into the picture with this? Because it's from an advertising and a marketing side of things, but it's also where we are with price check right now. Um, and then, you know, where does the entrepreneurial thing come with it? So I've got a bunch of slides here that I'm going to, um, that, you know, the ideas and thoughts and things that I, that, that I work with. I'm going to focus a lot of it on where we are with price check right now. Um, we have quite a while. So uh, what I mean by that is you're more than welcome to open up the dialogue as we go along. I had a stint in advertising myself. I had an outdoor billboard company that uh, I was uh, that I started in in the nineties somewhere, um, and it started because I was um, driving along and I suddenly saw that we have water towers all over the place, and then we saw the water tower here in Cape Town, and we started an outdoor company and we started placing advertising on water towers um, and getting the rights for the one in Durban and the one in Joburg, etc. And then I stumbled across a, um, uh, the property of the National Rail and we started putting billboards on there and we sold a 5 million rand contract to the Free State Government and I stopped with billboards. I was like, enough of t trying to put stuff on towers. This has worked, you know, now uh, let's move on from there. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just discuss with you a few things, just ideas and thoughts of what have I done because price check's an interesting animal. Price check, three years ago when I came back from Singapore, I'd been working there for two years. Um, I took it over and it was a small part of, in the Naspatch group, it was that little, the runt of the litter in the corner. There were five people. Price check's now 35 people. Um, we're here, yeah, we're in Nigeria. Um, we have one and a half million visitors a month use, use our site. Half a million people a month use our mobile app uh, consistently. And you might have read the press in the last week or two, we signed MTN to co-brand and preload. Uh, so that's going to change. And I was going back a little and discussing it with, you know, it's the first time MTN has ever done a preload with an external company that is not a Facebook or a Twitter or something like that. So it's pretty cool. You know, so where we've gone with things. And um, so where are we? I'll just take a look, this goes slower than that. So why the word let's? Um, when I take a look at where we got with our staff and, and, and how I built things and, and where things go is one of the things that I, that, that, that I try and teach the people that we work with and, and, and the guys that, that we develop things is the power of, of, of these four, four letters. And why are they so important is when you deal with people and you want things done, is it's not a scenario of speaking to people and saying, you go and do that or have that done or have that delivered. It's a scenario of let's go and do this. Let's go and do, you know, because getting involved with people and with staff and with salespeople and, and, and clients and etc. is there's the collectiveness that works way better. It, people come with you. I was talking to Nokia this morning and I was telling them because we've been battling with one uh, development house and uh, I was telling them it's much easier to pull a piece of spaghetti than to push it. And, uh, you know, it's the whole scenario of let's do this. You know, it's, it's, it's a simple change of, of angle and, and, and this is where we've been able to get to with price check. Now, um, the other thing that throughout the years, what one has to do and what, where you want to go with things is, Steve Jobs once said, he says, creative people and people that understand where business is about aren't all naturally clever about things or they don't have the, uh, um, uh, I'm not taking this away from creatives themselves, but people that are creating things. All they know is how to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And why I brought this, the, the, this, this topic up is, Read, expand your knowledge, find out as much as you can. I do this, I'm three o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting on my phone reading stuff and all over the place. Throughout the years, I've read a lot of stuff and I've, I, I, I have an inherent interest in the things that I do. And by having 5% more interest in the area of, your, of, of, of work that you're in than the guy next to you puts you at a major advantage. 
Because if you can start putting the p pictures of the puzzle together, I sit with a client and, 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 and I'm talking to them about something and I suddenly remember that three years ago, I ran into something or I read something or I put something together and I'm like, you know what, if you took that and you put that together and you bring, brought that together and suddenly it works. So the more sources of information, the bigger the library in your mind, you don't have to remember it all, but my God, you just need to know where to find it. And that's the beauty of things is get, get a little bit more excited and interesting about, interested about life. Now I'm going to touch a little bit on the philosophical thing is there's no prize at the end. Now I'm not taking away from religion, okay? So, so whatever you believe in is fine, but you've got one shot. Now um, I have a newsletter that I subscribe to. Man, I've got all kinds of stories. Here. But um, it, it, it came out the other day with a beautiful thing and it says, what if it at the end, and bear with me on the philosophical side, I, I don't want to go down that, but I just want you to understand where I'm going with it. What if at the end it says, uh, you get to the next, next level of life and it says, so how was heaven? Okay, so now it, with that concept, Think about it. You've got one shot at this place called life. Yeah. So the more you find out, the more you, every now and again I get like I scared and I'm like, my God, this is going to end sometime because we live in a fantastic place. One of the reasons I'm back in Cape Town, I've now lived and worked in 54 cities in 23 countries. And this is where I'm back. I love here. Yeah, everything. We have a fantastic life here. So don't miss what you guys have got here. And um, the whole idea of growing yourself and growing you, where you go out in life and what you want to achieve in life, it's not going to, uh, wisdom, it's not going to uh, tap you on the shoulder in bed at night. Get out there. Last night I was at First Thursday. Have you ever done that? Man, it's the second one I've been to and it's spectacular. Everybody's out and there's art and there's wine and there's, it's a phenomenal place. It was like New York. It reminds me of New York. It's exactly how New York is. Um, the and I'm going to bring you then to the one about Steve Jobs. And this one reminds me of what we're doing with price check right now. So let's read it quickly. You know, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can build things that people can use. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same. This is what they did with the iPhone. Um, the first iPhone that came out, uh, while they were building it, Steve Jobs took it and he looked at it and he threw it in the closest um, fish pond. And the guys were, why are you doing that? He says, can you see there's air bubbles coming out? This thing is still too big. You can still find space up. And they changed the whole way. Five years ago, BlackBerry was the biggest uh, mobile company in the world. Um, Nokia was the biggest seller of phones. There, none of them are around anymore. It's all changed in five years. And every now and again, I take a look at things and I wonder to myself in five years time, where is the rest of this stuff gonna be? Apple's biggest challenge right now is to continually reinvent. So bring a little bit more practical, where we are with price check right now. My vision and where we're taking a look at going with price check and, 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 and trying to achieve things is, I want you to be able to mimic real life behavior by being able to search for a product on a Friday night and know that within five or 10 kilometers, this is where it is. This is how to get there. And you know what? He has a voucher that can actually take you in store. And when you go and buy it, you know, instead of buying it there, why don't you just pay for it on your phone right now? You can pick it up tomorrow. South African e-commerce, you're not going to solve the problem of delivery. No, that's not going to happen. However, I was speaking to my staff during the week and I was saying to them, you know what? In the 60s and 70s, they had these movies of everybody driving in cars that were flying. I think that's going to be, um, now the word escapes me, uh, drones that deliver our products. We don't have to be in them, but it can solve the problem. If there were drones everywhere flying around. That's exactly what would happen. They just, whoever saw that vision just saw people inside it. Take the people out. And that could be a, could be a fantastic solution. You could channel air, air channels, yeah, that people can deliver stuff and it just runs according to the road and somebody sits in a, in a control room somewhere and takes it and drops it at your house. Or on, your, on, the, on the roof of the building. Start building the, you don't have to build a chopper, you have to build something this size. It's quite, quite amazing. So, putting that picture over there, and it, you know, in Africa, we, we, we also have price check in Nigeria. Now, oh, that's a fuck up. <laughs> oh, if you've ever been there, Man, but I must tell you one guys one thing. Nigerians are fantastic. When I go there, it re 
ignites my excitement about Africa. They're the most enterprising. Um, non, the world owes us something. Uh, mentality in the world. It's phenomenal. I really enjoy them. My God, everything. There's potholes everywhere. Our backup generator at our office have a, has a backup generator. <laughs> it's really, truly. But there, these types of things can work. You know, with map functionality nowadays, they, they have a thing called computer village there where they just checks. It looks really like Kailicha and those are computer stores. So you walk in and it's just computer stores everywhere. And, the, and those guys can take a, a, a pin drop on a map and he can say, this is where I am. And now I can build an app for somebody that sits in Lagos and he can drive there and he can walk. And the map will take him there. And it'll open up this shack and there's the, there's the computer store. And that's how we solve the spaza problems in South, Af in, in South Africa and in Africa. Because there's not a, well, the guy's going to say, you know, I'm at number 500 and, oh, 1580 Kailicha. I don't know how the addresses work there. But they're absurdly like, how, you want to deliver to that? Well, you know what? Drop it on a pin because I can with my phone. Drop it on a pin right now. And uh, it, can, it can take me there. It's, it's spectacular what we can do. The mobile phone, why not put it in here? This will change everything. Now, if you take a look at where you go with your clients, etc., please wake them up to this. This is not the internet. This is something brand spanking new. We're rewriting the dynamic on mobile and where it's going. The internet is a desktop thing. This, in Nigeria already, 200% of our traffic compared to online is on mobile. Double. And what's an interesting thing I, I think and believe is that the first world doesn't get it yet. In Brazil, uh, we have a comparative shop price comparison site there and 5% of their traffic is on mobile. They're all still on, on desktops, etc. That's why we're building things here that are, are, are groundbreaking. Our mobile app last year was quite a nice one. We won International App of the Year. Beat 150,000 other apps and uh, got the prize in Orlando. South African app, locally built, two developers. And just because they understood mobile so well, I speak to a lot of international business people and they don't get it yet. But it's coming. Um, never mistake the power of influence. This is something that I use, and I'm using this example um, uh, in this discussion, specifically based around the MTN discussion that the, the, or, this, or the contract that we've just signed right now. <coughs> I was looking to get into the three different um, mobile operators, Vodacom, so I'll see MTN. And um, at a board meeting, I was sitting and um, we're in the NASPAS group, I was speaking, sitting and speaking to Chris Becker, and I said to him, you know, do you guys know anybody at uh, MTN at, at, at your level, you know, at, at, at that level? And yeah, sure. And he made the introduction for me to um, Carl Pinar, who is the CEO of MTN. And then I went to go and see him and Carl looked at this thing and he understood that e-commerce and mobile and shopping have to work together. It has to, you know, it, it just makes sense. This thing right now with price check, we've got about 11 million mobile uh, barcodes, barcodes in, our, in our database. So you can walk in store and scan something and see is the price that they're asking you correct? Can I get it some way better or can I negotiate the price down? Our guys use this and last time, I, 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 um, in Canal Walk at the Samsung store, uh, the guy said, but I can get it cheaper, 400 bucks cheaper, and they bought the price down. So don't forget to use it. Um, but so I used, I, I asked Chris to make the introduction, and at any time in the last year, now the MTN deal probably take about, took about 16 months to close. Any time in the last year, if there, was a, if there was an obstruction, I'd phone Carl Pinar and I'd say, Carl, you know, this somewhere there's, a, and it would take two days, and the pipes would be clean, and the system would go. So never. Um, I, the other thing that I do, this thing, my staff, I tell them it's not a paperweight. People are sometimes scared to pick up the phone. Don't be. We're all just people on the other side of the phone trying to to do things. Somebody, said, I, I don't, I'm not going to get the quote right, but uh, somebody said the other day, all we are are tall children that now that now can drink beer. <laughs> it's, uh, we're all different in in, in life. Um, you know, and everybody's just doing the best they can. They're just trying to uh, do what works for them. When it comes to staff, uh, this is probably the most important IP aspect of your whole business is uh, 
to attract and retain the right type of people. Uh, we've been going through a, a hiring stint the last while and every now and again I get somebody that's really well qualified but they don't fit in and uh, the team structure you know I was walking through your your, your building now when I was coming up to the lift interesting discussion <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> no don't apologize <laughs> it was very classy um, but there's a nice atmosphere here. There's good energy. You guys have got nice stuff. And, and somebody said it a while back. He said, you know what? We don't teach people to be nice in our company. We, try, we, we, we hire nice people. Isn't that a great time saver? <laughs> <laughs> so much easier. Um, and another thing, when you come to work, don't bring people your need. Bring them your seed. Okay? Let me explain the concept around that. Uh, life's pretty cool. If you want to have something happen, just get it going. Uh, the universe doesn't tell you that you've got to build and grow a tree. What you've got to do is throw water and give some sunlight. Just drop a seed in the ground and it'll grow. It's amazing. This world is like that. The universe will conspire to help you. Now I'm getting a little bit philosophical. <laughs> come, come back again. Um, it'll conspire to assist and help you. It has to. It's an intelligent universe. So if you tell it, what you want, it will give it to you. It's just depend depending on how you look at it. But this is a much longer discussion around lots of wine and winter and fireplaces <laughs> and uh, where things go. Technology, guys, has always been about enabling human potential. This all is to be able to, all of everything that we do is to make things better and to uh, stimulate this thing inside here. Yeah. You heard earlier that I dropped out of med school and I did. I was uh, went to med school and it was very exciting because Every girl wanted to take you, and uh, you know, you uh, go and uh, and strangely enough, I went to a place called Bloemfontein, um, and the only reason I did is my dad went there, and he said you've got to go there. I got to prove, uh, got that Stellenbosch and Tux, and but I went to Bloemfontein, and um, uh, I was looking at this scenario of um, uh, studying to become a doctor, and I got in my first year you dissect the body, and it's quite amazing to be able to do that is, 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 is to you take your whole year and you cut up a whole cadaver and it's the first few weeks you don't eat because you smell that formalin and after a while it, you stand next to it and eat the cut <laughs> <laughs> but what you realize then is how amazingly it was made and then at the point in time you open the, the mind and there's a brain in your hand and I heard a lovely thing yesterday and it said the amount of uh, nerves in the brain is equivalent to the amount of stars in the universe. There's a billion brain cells and a billion stars. And that means that, my, my dad used to say that, he said, if somebody dies, a whole universe dies. And it's true, because if, if, if you're the only person that looks at your universe the way that it is. Nobody else looks at your universe the way it is. So if somebody dies, the whole universe dies. And when I looked at this, and then in your second year that you do uh, physiology, and then you see what all the chemicals that work in this system that you've got here, and everything matches. Did you know that you've got a receptor in your brain that is made specifically for opium? That's all it does. It's all, that, that's, that's the only purpose it has. How that fits together, nobody knows. But it's there. So it's amazing stuff, and you see all of these things, and it's so exciting. So my third year, I was like, for one, I, I, and this is more on my net, net profit talk direction, but uh, I read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, and it's the power of the mind. And I was like, you know what, I don't want to sit here, and it's a royal calling, and I don't knock it, but I don't want to work with the sick, and I don't want to be a motor mac for people, and, you know, 20 sick uh, people every day is going to drive me off the wall, because that's not who I am. And so I moved from med, med, med school and then went into, into um, different stuff, and actually the first company I started was teaching kids how to learn and changing how they look at life. And one day when you catch me somewhere and you buy me a glass of wine, I'll show you how to remember numbers. I, I do 10 by five and a number in every grid piece. Uh, it'll take me five minutes to remember and tell you exactly where they all are. And it's purely just mnemonics. Um, and that's what we taught kids how to do. And this is where we're going with it now, is taking my people and the, and the staff is by giving people a bit of a vision and make them buy into it. Get them excited about it. And then you start taking a look at what technology can do. We live in phenomenal times. The things that we can do 
in this is spectacular. When I was growing up, the access to knowledge that we had was a set of encyclopedias in, in, in our house. And I heard my niece the other day and she said, this is such junk, it doesn't work whatsoever. Well, you know, if something was wrong with it. And I thought to myself, you know what? You have access right now in my hand and every one of you has it as well. You have access to all the knowledge that was ever available. If anything that has ever been done, you can find. It's all been digitized. Everything that's been written, everything that's been thought, everything that's been painted, that's been built, that been, that's been... You continue with the list. It's right there. It's truly amazing times that we live in, to be able to take these things on. And um, it reminds me of, 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 you know, where we go with things. And, and, and what's interesting is that the technology, the, the, the people that sit in this room and the people that are out there are quite... We've taken things on quite spectacularly well. You take a look at South Africans abroad. There's an article running around, and I can copy you guys in it, but there are about 86,000 South Africans in the US. And from them, I have amazing developments have come. Elon Musk, South African. Uh, the head of Stanford Business School, South African. The head of Notre Dame, South African. Um, the in Silicon Valley, they realized that this year is that in the last five years, SEO of the year, CEO of the year, not the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, CEO of the year, bar this year, has all been South Africa. There's amazing knowledge and stuff that comes from here. You know, people take what they've got and they run with it. And um, so, bringing the whole technology scenario, what we're doing with Price Check right now is we're bringing mobile into the commerce space. It's going to change and faster and faster because of where we are in business we re research quite in depth where things are going overseas in America um, malls are running empty shops are shutting down left right and center staples just closed 50% of all their stores uh, best buyers closed a lot of them um, and it's all coming it's, it's, it's rolling out everywhere and the reason for that is mobile and mobile access and being able to shop and to find and to find solutions on mobile. People will run in store maybe to pick something up that they bought, but the shopping around of stuff now happens on the mobile space. And this is also, you know, social is here. Um, Facebook looks better on mobile than online. <laughs> Have you seen the new Facebook? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> looks like, aerial, it's disgusting. Uh, Twitter, you know, communication. If I want to know what local news is, I fought Twitter for many a year that I would say, no, I'm not going to go. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, no, man, what's this? I don't want to read what somebody had for breakfast until I switched it on. And I started realizing it gives me news of local things that are happening. If I want to see something in the morning that's happening, some interesting news, I just switch on Twitter early morning. Many years ago, we all used to smoke. The first thing you reach out is a cigarette. Now the first thing you reach out to is your mobile phone. Take a look, is there email? Did somebody send me something? Did somebody... What's this thing that guys in the office are using? Tinder. Um, <laughs> see, everybody that laughs, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, point of sale in stores have become points of sale. Everywhere now is a point of sale. And I'm going to show you a nice little clip in a moment. It's a new revolution that's happening, guys. So, you know, keeping where, why is, why is price check so, so uh, uh, why are people liking it? Because it works for them, wherever they are. If he's in Canal Walk, and he's trying to do a um, uh, find out where a product is or where a special is, or if he's at home, or you know where I use price check a lot is overseas. Because I'm now going to take a look when I'm abroad if the product is cheaper at home or if, and it always is with exchange. <laughs> now that it kills us. I used to do calculations at 10 to 1 with a pound. You know, it's 18 to 1 now. It's double that. It's just like, it scares me completely. It's the really, really, really not nice. Retail is being reinvented. Um, we're taking a look at how um, it makes things easier. I've covered this topic quite a bit uh, during my discussion now. So we've touched on all the areas of, it, of, of mobile, of being avid, having points of sale, where things are cashing out, where they go, um, how, how, how um, this big data that we get. We're starting to get it, add big data in our app so that I can give to a brand, to a retailer. I can tell them that, you know what? Between 12 and 3 on a Saturday afternoon, people are looking for this type of product. So best you put it on special, and half of my users are in Tiger Valley and not in Canal Walk. So put the special on in Canal Walk, because they're going to barcode scan it in Tiger Valley, and then that, you, you'll change and move them there. 
or make sure you know that on uh, they, they start using um, uh, weather in predictive analytics and in, and in, in, in um, the retail space that if they take a look if it's going to rain on the weekend then we do, then we sell more wine or this or that or the next thing um, if it's going to the, the, the sun's going to shine then we make sure everything is ready for a bride and they start playing and, and doing their, playing their buying around that uh, that, there's a very classic example of those of you that have studied or listened to the big data argument is that in, Wall, in Walmart, they, the biggest thing that sells with nappies is beer. <laughs> and it's because the husband gets sent out to go and buy the nappies. And while he's there, he thinks, fuck, I'm going to reward myself and buy a six-pack of beer as well. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that closer to nappies now they could be? <laughs> Figure. Guys, in this world we're in, the one thing is things are happening faster and faster. Um, one must take a look at where things are. If you take a look at the advertising or the message that goes out, make it easier for people to find what they're looking for. Get the information to them. Information is currency. So if you've got the knowledge and the info, Price check is all, that's all we are. Our whole business model is based around information. I sell nothing. We don't sell a thing. All we do is d direct traffic to where people want to be and what, where merchants want, to, what, what want us to be. Speed is a necessity. Speed's your friend. Um, and unfortunately, we've got to get used to it because the faster and faster, you, somebody can sit in a discussion and, and, and find the answers, as I was talking about it just now. You can find the answers you're looking for. So. Not having an answer for something is no excuse. And then innovation drives change. There's South Africa specifically, um, well, South Africa, Africa specifically, innovation is where things go. We started many years ago. Uh, one of the first things that we did with um, uh, broadband, there was no broadband, and, and, and the, the, the access to information, the access the usage of, of, of data was with dial-ups and we had really thin channels of information on mobile and we had to work out a way and I had a few very clever de designers that built the, the compressed video on mobile very 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 small they, the rest of the world didn't need this because they've got these big pipes of data so they don't have to build things that work on small on small phones and the guys still use it Opera is used very very successfully in Africa because they compress data uh, but we built a thing where you could send an MMS. So you would send a, a, a premium rated SMS and then get back a uh, compressed um, video or a picture or something like that. And that's where the first revolution started. They say that in the future, very soon, YouTube is going to take over from all data in the world because you can start watching it all year. Data is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Um, and we built this MMS scenario so to be able to send it an, an, a, a, a premium rated SMS and bring back compressed stuff and it's purely because um, of the innovation that had to happen in Africa um, and that it was all that we had that we could work with. Um, when you take a look at technology, the more and more what we're trying to do with PriceCheck itself is to mimic real life behavior. Um, our search results and this is um, we've taken a look at the business or, or, or the business platform in South Africa uh, less than and this is always an interesting step when I listen to, when I think about it less than 1% of retail happens on uh, happens online so you all know this massive noise about e-commerce you know it's less than 1% of the retail market it's so small so I looked at this and we said to, to, wait a minute so how do we solve this problem? What we've done now is we've digitized all the offline catalogs. So you know the ones you get on a Thursday? So you do get the paper on a Thursday. I love the staff in my office that go and make sure that they get the newspaper on a Thursday so they can page the catalogs on the weekend. And the ones you get in the Sunday paper. We've digitized all of them and made them interactive. So you can page them and you can click on the different products and it takes you and shows you where the stores are. And that's our step one, where we're taking the offline retail environment. Soon, I'll have digitized most of the stuff. I don't need a store's full inventory. All I need to do is have 50 or 100 of their top products to make sure I send people through the door. And we'll use coupons and vouchers to be able to track the conversion when it goes in the store. And at some other point in time, we're going to tell the store that 
I want a percentage of the whole basket that the guy is shopping, not just the product I said, because I said, and we're going to do that. But that, um, being able to digitize all of this stuff, our next app that comes out, you'll have all the catalogs on here. So you can then, it, it opens up on that because it's then going to show you the catalogs for products that are close to you. And you can then go down and left and right and take a look, see exactly how, how, where it is. And where on, on, on Saturday am I going to buy a new TV at game? Or do I need to go to Macro? And you know what? With, with us and with technology, you don't have to go to all those places. You can go and have breakfast at the breakfast at the biscuit bar. And you can go for a quick swim in the sea. It's cold, it's warm, and that's it. And then you can go and pick the product up because you paid for it and it's waiting for you in store. And I'm going to kind of move towards the end of my talk. Guys, this is where it's all at. Keep your dreams alive now. That little business idea and concept and things that you've got, make them happen. Find places and ways to do that. The dreamers that move the world, practical men are so busy being practical. They cannot see beyond their own lifetime. Dreamers and visionaries have made civilizations. And uh, it's trying to do the things that cannot be done that makes life worthwhile. As I said to you before, you've got one shot at life. Take it now while you're still not afraid. And the dream of today becomes the custom of tomorrow. Everything is sweetened by risk. Take some chances. You know, Pick up that phone. If there's that guy or girl, um, mainly girls here, so it's, it's, uh, um, that... Uh, you see in a bar or something, pick up the phone, walk up to them, go introduce yourself and do that in your business life as well. It's there. You know, if you don't ask the question, the answer is always no. And uh, for that, make sure that you lay foundations for the drama. And then lastly, <laughs> I'm going to...
phone's just too blown away. Oh, yes, sir. I just like the way you were commenting on this thing and having all the knowledge in it. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting uh, concept of how a long time ago humans made a big leap forward because they started putting uh, their minds outside the bodies when the printing press was invented. Oh, yes, so yes. So we actually live outside of ourselves because we can store our knowledge outside of our brains. So that thing, the phone, becomes an extension of you. So you live outside of your body even more so. It's interesting that, yeah, because then you connect. You know, now your connection is just closer to everything that's outside. You know, it just used to be difficult to find all the things. When we taught kids how to learn, you always used to say that everything is in your mind. You just don't know where it is. You just got to know places where to go and find it. You know, so if you file information correctly, you can, if you think about how you got to work this morning, it's all pictures that you're connecting towards each other. And what you're saying there, I like that, because what you now, you're just your interface to where you put store things outside is just so much easier and closer. It's not an encyclopedia that, that you know, is static that you have to work with. I was going to um, ask, I mean, you're in, essentially, I suppose, when you started Price Check, it was a service that was supposed to help you know, people engage with different ways in which they could find out information about the products that they have. Yeah. And you've now moved yourself into the position where retailers obviously see you as more of an essential service to them. Yeah. In the world, at least it's moving in that direction now. So, with regard to like digitizing of uh, catalogs and uh, do you take that in house or would you expect that to come from the retailers in the future? We, we do it all in house. Um, for now, strangely enough, we use I would use a term called it's not uh, it's OCR, but it's ocular character recognition. Yeah. We scan it and then send it to India, and they cut out all the pictures and yes. make sure that they match up. You know, so it's all still manual. Yeah. Um, ideally, in time, what we're already getting is that um, in the past, when we when the guys started, they scanned the the, the catalogs. Yeah. Now we get from a lot of the the, the retailers, we get the catalogs PDF straight away. You know, so that the high, the quality is much higher. And ideally in time, we'll have a big enough library because there's probably only, you know, about 25,000 uh, FMCG SKUs that we're going to need. All the rest, we've got about 30 million products in price check. All the rest of them, we've got all the information and the reviews and everything. So we still are that service to the end user. So the guy is still getting a review on the product. He can still see, you know, is this the right product for me? Um, you know, our one database that we're playing around with is that I'll be able to tell you are there peanuts in the product or is it a lull or you know so you can scan it and it says it's a lull so you know you can or can't buy it or whatever the story might be then that type of information we now go back to retailers and we now have a list of information that we get from them and because it's essential for them they want to be where the customer is we're starting to get more and more it's taken them a little while because the, 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 the thinking is still old retail uh, but the mindsets are changing and then with regards to like I said for instance families in Africa um, if you were able to get like uh, information and data from the retailers to a coded version of the PDF, for instance, so it's not image based, it's actually code. Yeah. You like it, you will think. So then you get the retailers actually using you as an essential service model. Because without that uh, bridge where you are to your normal uh, end user. So instead of getting, instead of manually doing work, the retailers would then obviously say, "Well, we need to be a fast check, so we're yeah. actually going to provide you with our database before we even go to print." So yes, exactly. Yeah, and what, and what we're actually using as the as a pivot point on that are barcodes. Yeah. So they would send us all their barcodes. We already have a database of all that information, and then it's just easy to, fit, to you know to populate the fields. Yeah. So you know you would get a. a, a, um, a um, Catalog from Macro, and all they do is send us the barcodes, and it'll just populate on the on the on the, on the catalog um, or on the mobile search. It'll just populate what the stuff that you're looking for. What what is the scope for that being live? Like you know, when you go when you've got your rewards rewards card, you this close? Very, yeah, we're very very close. We're actually some places can already supply us with a stock <coughs> on in store right now. So I can tell you that at Woolies there are yes. ten pieces of this. So when you scan that barcode and you've used your price check app, you could potentially then get like another discount on it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The integration with loyalty in the back, the puzzle pieces are there. Yeah. How to put them together is a little... I'd say we're about a year or 18 months away from something like that.
but it's going to happen very f- much faster than a lot of the other development. I, I think we're at a, and and mobile wallets. I was in payments in in in, in London and in Singapore. I think mobile wallets this year and next year it's going to get it's something's going to pivot. You know what? It's actually quite interesting that when you're watching the stock in the shops, maybe we shouldn't do that at all. We can watch the stock in your home. When you run on something, bam, your shopping list is populated and delivered. The Internet of Things. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've been using a, a, a payment app like that on QR code at the credit store down the road. Snapscan. Snap yeah, Snapscan. Yeah, South African development. Yeah. Again. The, the guys have already started uh, kind of overpopulating the server, or the server can't handle the load because there are too many people using the Snapscan service. For wow. Because sort of lose that and you know, stuff, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, the guys actually find enough. So, like, there must be something wrong with the system. Like, uh, people actually use it. I love that because it was developed in Stellenbosch. Yeah, bright, bright minds around here. You know, it's really Snapscan itself has got lots of legs to stand on. Yes. Um, you said that it's really important to mimic real world behavior yeah. in um, that digital space. How do you research your behavior? You take a look at a few um, aspects. One is a little bit of intuition. Um, secondly, I take a look, I, I use my staff a lot. And I say, we did a study last year, and I said, why aren't you guys using the app? And we've got a range of sam- samples come back. And then we have access to a lot of data. So we've got all this information coming. Now, the important thing about big data is, one, it's a word that just gets thrown around. But secondly, before you, you know, they say you have all this data, and now you're going to do something with it. That's the wrong, that's the wrong way of looking at it. The way to look at it is, what do we want to determine? And then you access the data. So what we do then is we ask those different questions and then take a look at what information have we got and what more do we need and then how do we bring it in and then filter it down with, with, with different data um, uh, filters. Now, we don't have a massive um, capacity for that and it is just a small division in the company, but it's gross. You know? So it is there and we're trying to do more and more but we're seeing we're now tracking exactly when are people looking for something where they're looking for it what is it um, and then we determine wait a minute for example one a- aspect that we've taken a look at that suddenly is interesting and I speak to all the e-commerce guys and I say baby stuff for young kids between one and six nappies that type of stuff place all your keywords in Google between 12 and 4 in the morning because that's when the moms are awake Mm-hmm. And they've got nothing else to do, so they're on a tablet and they're shopping. Forget the rest of the day. Nobody's nobody's looking for nappies at twelve o'clock in, at lunchtime. He's looking for, so that, you know she's looking for a new brand at three o'clock in the morning because she that she's feeding a child. Mm-hmm. And that's you know those things then become interesting. Okay. Do you have a, a text service in, in Africa so you can sort of text the model number and then get the? You know, Chris, we were looking at that at a point in time, and then I take a look at what the Chinese are doing, and in two years' time, everybody's <coughs> going to have a smartphone. Mm-hmm. There's going to be access to it's access to information. Is just going to blow everyone away. Um, so we're building towards that. We've got a, a, um, a feature phone uh, version of, 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 of price check, and our, our first first iteration was text. Send a text and get an answer back, and then USSD, so we played around with that. Um, and then suddenly we built the app, and it was the take up was phenomenal, and it just ran away with us. And that happened so fast that I'm now I'm like in two years time, the the, the, the cycle of phones is, is two years long. Everybody's gonna have a smartphone, you know. The the MTN stepper that we're going on is a fifty dollar phone. Um, in Nigeria, it's an Android, <coughs> Android, yeah, Android. Uh, it's it's a two point two or two point one Android, so it's still an early version. But uh, the Nokia X is out. Okay, Asha are out, all touch, all smartphone, all access to information. Uh, so much easier than, than, than text itself. And with Wi-Fi, it's then free. So you reckon two years? That's yeah. like pretty much 100%. Well, you know, 100% is yeah. a relative term. But, you know, till every, I must also not forget that my bottom LSM um, is not the people spending money. So, I, you know, I can, I can spend a lot of, I can go to a merchant and say, you know, we've got so many people, but if 80% of them are LSM1, they're not getting them coming into the store. So, you know, we've also got to make sure that we, that we get send traffic to the merchant that is spending money because to have the comparative pricing on milk helps no one, you know, um, uh, except possibly, you know, somebody for who a rand is. And there are a lot of them, you know, I'm not discounting that. But for the retailer, it's not, it's not changing things. 